Hello everyone, my name is Vox. Today we're going to be taking a look at AMD's FSR, or Fidelity FX Super Resolution, running on the Ioneo. This uses AMD's 4500U Renoir platform, which has a Vega GPU. The game I'm testing is Rift Breaker, as this has a reproducible benchmark that I could quickly show comparisons both in terms of image quality as well as performance benches. AMD FSR has been a long time coming, and for how long we waited, the results aren't great and a little bit weird, but the ultra quality preset on FSR isn't too bad. Because I'm testing this on the Ioneo, the native resolution is 1280 by 800. As such, how FSR works, we are basically upscaling from a lower resolution, and any resolution lower than 800p will naturally be lacking quite a bit of detail. Before we get too far into this video, I thought it'd be worthwhile to immediately show what Riftbreaker looks like at the Neo's 800p native resolution. Also, of quick note here, don't pay too much attention to the benchmarks on the screen. That frame rate will be lower because I'm using the 4500U to capture the video. I took separate benches without OBS running. For a quick look at the actual benchmark results, here they are. So very quickly you can see that FSR Ultra Quality offers us around a 20% performance improvement over default native resolution. Overall, I think it is worth it. Anything on a lower preset really isn't. We'll talk about this more later on in the video, especially with FSR performance as well as 50% resolution scale and FSR sharpening or Radeon image sharpening. FSR is not DLSS or TAA, so the resultant image upscaling, even when using the best preset like ultra quality, can still lack detail. In this segment, we are looking at a 400% zoom of the Rift Breaker bench. And while in motion it can be a little hard to discern some of the details, if I freeze the frame right here, looking at the tree leaves, it's immediately evident how much detail is lost. It's important to note here with this 400% zoom that a lot of the problems will be exaggerated and at the end of this video. I've included the full capture of every segment with each setting. You should be able to easily find them in the chapter breaks below so that you can have a little bit more of a holistic, better view between each setting. This part of the video is going to be the most brutal as we look at balanced and performance modes of FSR. Even just 6 seconds into this comparison, it's very clear how much detail is getting robbed. If we switch between the previous set of comparisons comparing ultra quality, we can see that the face of the gem still manages to have the same general image as native in the shot, but switching back over to balanced and performance highlights why that Vaseline blurring is occurring across the board on these tests. Again, we are working with low base resolutions, as such, performance mode image data starts as far down as 400p. Once again, it's clear to see how exaggerated the loss of detail is here. The tree leaves highlight it a lot, but even if we take a look at the top of the picture, there it loses a lot of the detail with discerning the difference between the two objects. And on the performance preset, it honestly looks like tomatoes at the top. Uh, you can't really see them. The blurring effect that is happening is kind of joining those two objects together. And there is no distinction between the two, which is unfortunate. But again, I really don't recommend performance mode. But this is what it looks like at a 400% zoom level. This one might be a little bit more difficult to see, but if you use YouTube's ability to uh, slow down the frame rate, it might be actually a little bit easier to catch this. This is at 200% zoom. I've removed the bottom layer just so you can see all detail. From left to right, we have the native resolution, followed by ultra quality, then quality, then balanced, then performance mode. It's a little bit more difficult to see this. And again, when it's in motion, it does get a little bit difficult and you have to really kind of see it all together to kind of really appreciate how blurry things get uh, and we'll kind of take a look at that in a moment and then start talking about benchmarks and figures and then my opinion on where this what's worthwhile and where you should actually take it all right this last segment of the video before we talk about the benchmarks and the conclusion of the video i want to see if you the audience could tell the difference between the worst quality presets here so that is fsr performance mode 50 percent resolution scale with no fsr at all 
And then 50% resolution scale with Radeon image sharpening, but not FSR performance mode. So those are three different modes, but see which one you think is which. And I'm going to mix between them. The only difference that you'll really be able to tell is slight differences in image quality, but also the HUD changing with frame rate and stuff. So see if you can tell which one is which, and then we'll get to the benchmark part of this. All right, so that may have seemed like a trick question, but it honestly wasn't. Those three were three different modes. The first one was 50% resolution scale plus Radeon image sharpening. The second was 50% resolution scale and nothing else. And the third was FSR performance mode. I'm going to stop this video right here. We're going to take, take a look at just this still image so we can kind of compare what's going on. But it is genuinely difficult to see the difference between 50% resolution scale plus uh, Radeon image sharpening. It should be noted that uh, in the back end on my settings, I have Radeon image sharpening set to 80% and FSR performance mode. I don't really have any option to change whatever sharpening is happening. It could just be that FSR performance mode looks sharper on the bottom image here because it's dialed up to 100%. And if that's the case, what even is FSR? If it's only resolution scaling plus Radeon image sharpening, what took so long for this to come out? Is it just so that they had to like open it up so that it was available to everyone? It was just code cleanup. I'm, I'm really struggling to find where FSR is going to land in the landscape of these tools that we have available to us, especially when, you know, TAA is already out and uh, advanced versions of TAA are coming out uh, soon. And then DLS is going to be tapping into temporal anti-aliasing. So where does FSR find itself in this landscape. I've read some stuff that FSR can integrate with temporal anti-aliasing, but I don't know how well that even works and where in the pipeline that would fit, how it would affect performance, because there is a small performance hit with Radeon image uh, sharpening as seen by just doing 50% resolution scale with nothing. I, we actually get the best performance out of all of that. If we take a look at the benchmarks, 50% resolution scale and nothing else is actually the best performance. Image quality wise, it is the most blurry uh, FSR performance mode and image 50% uh, resolution scale plus Radeon image sharpening are better image quality like the, the image quality is better from those. But both of those are around 10% less performance than just straight 50% resolution scale. So there is a performance impact here. But is that going to be worthwhile with all the other stuff? I really don't know. And I'm, I'm struggling to find out how this is going to fit into anything. The bottom line from this is that uh, ultra quality preset is worthwhile. As we go down on the lower resolutions, it makes less sense. Higher resolutions, FSR benefits a lot more with. However, there are better solutions than FSR. So I really am struggling to find where this is useful. Um, this is kind of where I'm going to be ending it. If you take a look at the bookmarks below, this video will continue on. It'll kind of just be the videos themselves of the straight uh, captures, just so you can have a better look at those, and those will be marked. If you want to look at them, fine. If not, you can go ahead and close this video. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.